you, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. Um, good morning and welcome to the September 23rd, 2021 California Board of Accountancy meeting. My name is Nancy Corrigan and I'm the president of the California Board of Accountancy or CBA as we refer to it. As I call the meeting to order, please be advised that this meeting is being conducted consistent with the provisions of Governor Gavin Newsom's executive order N0821 signed on June 11th, 2021. At this time, I will turn the meeting over to Ms. Reed, our board relations analyst, to take roll call and establish a quorum. When Ms. Reed calls your name, please unmute your microphone and state your name. Remember to mute your microphone once you have stated your name. Ms. Reed? Nancy Corrigan. Nancy Corrigan, present. Michael Savoy. Present. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines. Present. Dan Jacobson. Here. Sochi Leon. Sochi Leon here. Luz Molina Lopez. Luz Molina Lopez, present. Dee Dee Owens. Present. Katrina Salazar. Present. And Yen Tu. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Reed. I would like to thank CBA staff and the solid team for their assistance in facilitating this virtual meeting. I also want to comment that this board is very fortunate to have such dedicated and qualified staff and staff leadership at the helm. The CBA's mission is to protect consumers by ensuring only qualified licensees practice public accountancy in accordance with established professional standards. This mission is derived from the statutory requirement that protection of the public shall be the highest priority for the California Board of Accountancy in exercising its licensing, regulatory, and disciplinary functions. Whenever the protection of the public is inconsistent with other interests sought to be promoted, the protection of the public shall be paramount. Members of the public interested in participating in the meeting must join the WebEx meeting. Information and instructions are posted on our website. All lines are currently on mute. As I facilitate this meeting to allow for the proceeding in an orderly manner, lines will remain on mute until I direct the moderator to open them for public comments. I will announce when we are accepting public comments on the various issues and the moderator will open the lines as appropriate. Five minutes will be allotted to each individual providing comments. I would also like to remind board members and others speaking during the meeting to please use the raise hand feature if you wish to make a motion, ask a question, or make a comment. This approach is necessary to facilitate the meeting and ensure the board has the opportunity to complete its necessary business. And I appreciate everyone's understanding of this. At this time, we will start with agenda item one, which is public comment for items not on the September meeting agenda. The moderator will provide general instructions and then open up for public comment. Moderator, please proceed. Thank you. This is the moderator. Members of the public, the instructions are on the screen for your reference. The Q&A, simply click on the Q&A icon, which is typically located at the bottom right corner of your WebEx screen. When the pop-up appears, type, I would like to make a public comment in the Ask field and send it to all panelists. And when prompted, click the Unmute Me button. Board President, no requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do. Thank you. I'm moving on to agenda item two, which is report of the president. 2A is resolution for retired California Board of Accountancy member George Famlet, CPA. Whereas George Famlet CPA was appointed by Governor Edmund G. Brown Jr. and he has faithfully served as a member of the California Board of Accountancy from November 23, 2015 through August 19, 2021 
And whereas he served as president in 2019, vice president in 2018, as a chair and a member of the Committee on Professional Conduct, member of the Legislative Committee, and member of the Enforcement Program Oversight Committee and California Board of Accountancy member liaison to the Enforcement Advisory Committee and Peer Review Oversight Committee. And whereas throughout his term of service at all times, he gave fully of himself and his ideas and acted forthrightly and conscientiously, always with the public interest and welfare in mind. And whereas he is a member of the California Board of Certified Public Accountants, or California Society of Certified Public Accountants, pardon me, American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, and the Association of Latino Professionals in Finance and Accounting. And whereas he has been a tax partner at PricewaterhouseCoopers LLP since 2005, prior to being named tax partner, he held several other positions, including U.S. Indirect Tax Practice Leader and Specialty Partner Tax Team Leader of the San Jose Tax Practice, and whereas his colleagues wish to express to him their highest esteem and regard. Therefore, be it resolved that the members of the California Board of Accountancy expressed heartfelt appreciation to George Famlet, CPA, for the outstanding contribution he made during his term of service on the California Board of Accountancy and to the consumers of California. If any member would like to make a motion to accept this resolution, please do so by raising your hand. Mr. Jacobson. I, I move that we accept the resolution. Thank you. And Ms. Salazar? Thank you. I would like to second that motion. Thank you, Ms. Salazar. Is there any further discussion from the members on this topic? Seeing no raised hands, moderator, please open for any public comments. This is the moderator. The instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate in public comment, click on the Q&A button, which is typically located at the bottom right corner of your WebEx screen, and type, I would like to make a public comment in the Ask field and send it to all panelists. Board President, no requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do. Thank you. Ms. Reed, would you call for the vote and provide the result? Carrie Ann farrell -Hine? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Soshi Leon? Yes. Luz Molina Lopez? Yes. Dee Dee Owens? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Katrina Salazar? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Yin Tu? Yes. And Nancy Corgan? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 2B, discussion of process, process for annual officer elections. At the November meeting, the CBA will elect the president, vice president, and secretary treasurer. The president, vice president, and secretary treasurer each serve one-year terms and may not serve more than two consecutive terms. CBA members who wish to be considered for a leadership position should submit a statement of qualifications to Rebecca Reed, our board relations analyst, as soon as possible, but no later than October 8, 2021, and you have more uh, information in your materials. Are there any questions or comments on this agenda item from the members? I see no hands raised. Moderator, would you please open for any public comment? This is the moderator. M members of the public, the instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click on that Q&A icon, typically located at the bottom right corner of your WebEx screen. Type, I would like to make a public comment and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do. 
I'm moving on to agenda item 2C, discussion of process for annual executive officer evaluation. Your materials provide information regarding the annual executive officer evaluation process. Our objective is to evaluate the executive officer's performance in a fair, impartial, and transparent manner in line with meeting our consumer protection mission. The process has changed slightly from the prior year. This year, you will receive the evaluation form from the Department of Consumer Affairs Human Resources Department. You will complete the evaluation and you will submit it back to the Human Resources Department. You might recall last year that uh, Nicole Lee assisted us and was present during our closed session uh, item on this topic. So, uh, but also be sure at the November meeting to have a copy of your evaluation in front of you when we go into closed session to discuss the process. Now, to assist you in completing your evaluation, you might want to refer to the annual report, which will be available a little bit later today. The monthly reports issued by Ms. Bowers are also uh, very indicative of what she has, how her performance, what she has been completing throughout the year her presentations at our regular meetings where you observe her in action, and her communications over the past year uh, to us. So all of those would be very helpful in uh, your completing that process. Members, are there any questions on this agenda item? Seeing no raised hands, moderator, please open for any public comments. Members of the public, the instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click on the Q&A icon located at the bottom right corner of your WebEx screen. Type, I would like to make a public comment and send it to all panelists. I do have a request from Jason Fox. Jason, I will unmute your microphone in just a moment. You do have five minutes. I have submitted a request to unmute your microphone, Mr. Fox. And, and just for the record, uh, and personally and professionally, I just want to recognize that uh, Ms. Bowers has been excellent uh, liaison for the board, uh, working with public stakeholders, and so um, very, very positive uh, reviews from from our end of things. Um, if that factors into your assessment, thank you. Board President, no further requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do. And Mr. Fox, thank you so much for your comments. We appreciate hearing those. I am moving on to agenda item 2D, California Board of Accountancy 2021 Legislative Tracking Chart. Patrick Ibarra, our Information Officer. Mr. Ibarra. Thank you, Madam President, and good morning, members of the board. Item 2D is the CBA 2021 legislative tracking chart, which reflects CBA positions and the status of bills on which the CBA has taken a position on. You received a legislative tracking chart with your materials. However, there have been updates following the conclusion of the legislative session on September 10th, which I would like to provide an update on now. If you turn attention, your attention to the slide, this chart reflects the most current status on the bills we have taken a position on. Right now, all except one bill are on the governor's desk awaiting his action. That one bill, SB 731, failed on the assembly floor, but has been noticed for reconsideration, which means it may be taken up again in 2022 for a vote only. Regarding the bills that have made it to the governor's desk, however, the governor now has until October 10th, 2021, to either sign or veto these bills. If he fails to act, the bills will become enacted without his signature. That concludes the updates to the legislative tracking chart. No action is necessary on this item. I'll turn it back to President Corrigan. However, Assistant Executive Officer Deanne Pierce and I are happy to answer any questions members may have. Thank you, Ms. Ribara. Members, are there any questions or comments regarding this agenda item? Seeing no raised hands, moderator, would you check uh, for any public comments? This is the moderator. Members of the public, the instructions are on the screen for your reference. Simply click that Q&A icon, 
Typically locate at the bottom of your WebEx screen and type, I would like to make a public comment and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do. Thank you. Agenda item E, discussion regarding legislative items staff present for California Board of Accountancy consideration. Deanne Pierce, our Assistant Executive Officer. Ms. Pierce? Good morning and thank you. So agenda item 2E is to provide an overview of how staff determine which legislation is presented to the CBA for discussion and a possible position. To determine which legislation to present, staff primarily base it on the following factors. Uh, legislation that directly impacts the CBA, our Accountancy Act. Legislation that impacts the Business and Professions Code sections that govern the Department of Consumer Affairs and the various boards and bureaus. Topics of interest or concern to the governor's administration. Oftentimes there's um, specific um, topics that they um, have emphasis on. Uh, most recently that's been uh, legislation regarding uh, refugees, asylees, um, or special immigrant visa holders. In the past it's related to military. Um, other, other legislation we bring forward are topics of concern nationally that may have a California impact. For example, anything on deregulation and also legislation that impacts other code sections that provide general oversight and guidance to CBA functions. An example of that would be um, legislation that impacts the um, Bagotine Open Meeting Act or the Administrative Procedures Act regarding the rulemaking process. The most common reason legislation is presented for consideration is because staff were provided direction by the CBA or it was expressed as a topic of interest by the current or a prior CBA composition. Staff performed several steps prior to presenting a bill for CBA consideration, which are identified on page two of the agenda item. Staff welcome any feedback the members may have regarding changes that will enhance the legislative re review process at CBA meetings. And at this time, I'll turn it back over to President Corrigan, and I'm happy to answer any questions members may have. Thank you, Ms. Pierce. Members, do you have any questions or comments uh, for Ms. Pierce? Seeing no raised hands, moderator, would you please open for any public comments? This is the moderator. Members of the public, the instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click that Q&A button, type, I would like to make a public comment and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do. Thank you. And now agenda item 2F, presentation regarding the implementation of statutes. Again, we have Deanne Pierce, Assistant Executive Officer. Ms. Pierce? Thank you. So I just wanted to provide a little overview um, of the activities that staff undertake when we are working to implement new statutory provisions um, following the passage of legislation. And I've broken the relevant activities that occur into three primary steps, which include um, as soon as legislation is identified that impacts the CBA, that's when our initial work begins. Um, once the legislation is signed into law, and then we have activities that occur um, post implementation with regards to communication to our stakeholders, consumers, um, which I feel like that's probably one of the most important um, activities is uh, providing communication regarding uh, the new laws. And we, I think, for my opinion, at least do a really good job on that. We include as much transparency as possible. Um, we include posting all legislation um, that the CDA is following on our website. We include updates on legislation at all, almost all CBA meetings in our update publication, our annual report, DCA annual report, and the Sunset Review report. Uh, the legislative implementation process involves staff from all programs to ensure we have assigned uh, the correct subject matter experts to work on the specifics of implementation. 
but throughout the process, we really work as a team to accomplish the legislative goal. So I didn't get into too many specifics on that. It was just a high-level overview, but um, I'll turn it back over to President Corrigan, and I'm happy to answer any questions that members may have. Thank you, Ms. Pierce. Members, do we have any questions or comments regarding this agenda item? Seeing that there are no hands, moderator, would you please ask for any public comment? This is the moderator. The instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click the Q&A button, type, I would like to make a public comment and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do, thank you. And agenda item 2G is next, presentation regarding pending rulemaking packages. Again, we have Deanne Pierce, our Assistant Executive Officer. Ms. Pierce? Okay, third time's a charm here, let's go. So um, just wanted to provide a status on our pending rulemaking packages. As noted in the agenda item, state agencies, including the CBA, must follow the Administrative Procedures Act when adopting regulations. The rulemaking process, which is what we commonly refer to it as, provides the public a meaningful opportunity to participate and ensures that the state agency creates an adequate record for the Office of Administrative Law and Judicial Review. There are many steps to the rulemaking process uh, and several agencies are involved in the review and approval process, which can create extended timeframes to complete the process. However, ensuring the information in the rulemaking record is legally accurate and complete aids, aids in the approval process. At the CBA, the rulemaking packages are managed by program staff based on the subject matter of the proposed regulations. Um, we kind of divide and conquer in that respect. Um, for example, the, the fee increase regulations, which we'll be talking about later today, um, is handled by the administration division. Um, but there are other packages, for example, um, the one that we discussed at a meeting or two ago regarding uh, eliminating the second signer. Um, the Certificate of Experience form that will be handled in the licensing area. So I'm happy to answer any questions on the actual rulemaking process, but if there aren't any questions, um, what I'd like to focus on is doing a review of the attachments, um, and that will include just providing a review of each, each subject matter and then kind of the pending status um, and where we're at on that. Very good. Are there any questions or comments uh, at this time for Ms. Pierce? I'm not seeing any hands. Um, moderator, would you please ask for any public comments? Yeah. The instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click that Q&A button, type I would like to make a public comment and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do, thank you. And Ms. Pierce, would you please continue? Thank you. So attachment one, um, this just really gives an overview of the, the regular rulemaking process. Um, uh, this is created by the Department of Consumer Affairs and it's really um, divided into kind of two um, phases. There's an initial phase um, which is the kind of the pre-work that we do before we actually submit the information to the Office of Administrative Law for a notice. And then we have the um, final phase, which includes um, the, the hearing phase, reviewing the comments, um, presenting it to the board, um, and finalizing the package um, before it is submitted to the Office of Administrative Law. Um, this particular overview, um, you'll notice, is um, from January of 2019. Um, I spoke with the regulatory staff at DCA. This is going to be updated. Um, they have um, refined some of the process, processes to make it um, more automated and less paper-based. Um, so I do anticipate some uh, streamlining um, in this, for this to occur. So let me move over to attachment two. So attachment two is just a summary regarding um, the practice privilege notification form. Um, this 
proposal seeks to update CBA regulation section 19 by adding a practice privilege notification form um, for individuals to submit um, if they are required to provide notice to the CBA um, prior to practicing through the mobility program. Um, we had a public hearing on this particular package back in May. Um, the most recent status, it's been updated. It was approved by the Business Consumer Services and Housing Agency, and it was filed with the Office of Administrative Law last week. Um, in terms of timeframes for their review, Typically, the Office of Administrative Law has 30 working days um, to review the file and render a decision. However, with the pandemic, um, one of the executive orders that was issued by the governor um, provided some extensions of time. So uh, I believe there's two 60-day extensions um, that are afforded um, for the rulemaking process at this time. So. Um, I'm hopeful that we will get um, a response from the Office of Administrative Law sooner than later, but um, hopefully at least by the end of this year or beginning of January 2022. And I am happy to answer any questions on this attachment before I move to um, the, uh, the next uh, attachment. Not seeing any hands. Why don't we go ahead and proceed through the attachments and then we can take them collectively. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Attachment three is the attest experience form changes. Um, these are changes that we proposed um, following um, SARS-21 and the creation of the preparation engagement service. Um, we needed to make some updates regarding the certificate of experience forms, which are required from applicants applying for CPA licensure with the authority to sign a test report. Um, you may also recall we had a public hearing on this particular regulatory package in May as well. And the status has changed um, since this was provided. Um, this particular package was filed with the Office of Administrative Law last week as well. Um, so I am hopeful that we will have an outcome on this um, by the end of the year or um, early 2022. Um, the next uh, regulatory package, attachment four, this is our fee increase package. Um, we're gonna be talking about this later today or tomorrow, I believe. Um, so we had a public hearing regarding the fee increase proposal, um, increasing the fee to our statutory maximum of $280. Uh, the hearing was in August. Um, we did not receive any, um, any attendees at the hearing, but we did receive one public comment, which is included in the board meeting materials. Um, and after the board discusses that, um, pending the outcome of their decision, um, the next steps will be to compile all the rulemaking documents and send it over to the Department of Consumer Affairs so it can continue through the approval process. Um, moving on to attachment five. So attachment five is an overview of the sale, transfer, or discontinuance of licensees practice. Um, we've had um, a lot of activity on this particular um, rulemaking package. Uh, this package um, was, it's, was started some time ago. Um, it's been through um, lots of legal review. Um, we initiated this following uh, some changes um, proposed by the Professional Ethics Executive Committee um, interpretations back in 2016. We uh, got the approval to file a notice with the Office of Administrative Law and schedule a public hearing, which we scheduled for September uh, 16th, um, just a week or two ago. And, but we have a particular provision in our law that requires us, if we are going to be amending any regulations relating to professional conduct, that we need to send a communication to all of our licensees to notify them regarding the proposed changes and give them an opportunity to provide comments or submit written comments at least 30 days prior to the hearing. 
So although we did have a public hearing uh, last week or the week before, um, we are actually going to schedule a second public hearing. Um, we are preparing a letter to be sent to all licensees so we can notify them of these proposed changes and give them an opportunity to provide comments. Um, and then once that hearing uh, has concluded, which we anticipate will be uh, held in December, we will compile all of the comments received and then we will present it for board consideration probably in uh, early 2022. So this is kind of a, um, a unique file um, but we are um, actively working on it, and uh, again, the members will see uh, the comments and the proposal uh, following the new year. And let me move on to attachment six. So attachment six are, um, is the overview of the continuing education requirements. Um, this has a few different things um, included in this proposal, um, but the primary thing is uh, adding some additional um, learning methodologies, including nano learning, blended learning, and adaptive self-study learning. Um, this mirrors the uh, NASBA's uh, model rules and provides some additional um, flexibility with regards to how licensees can uh, earn continuing education. Um, this package is um, a very large package. So the documentation to um, support all of the changes has been um, a, a work in progress and also a, a, a very much a team process. We have um, all the chiefs um, working on this and actively working with DCA to get this moving forward. We have right now a meeting with DCA in early October to review um, what we hope will be the final documents so that it can continue, continue through the review process um, and we can get a, a hearing scheduled on those changes. And my last item is, let me see, attachment seven. So attachment seven um, is a proposal regarding satisfactory evidence of educational qualifications. Uh, this primarily um, amends the regulations to allow us to, um, allows us more flexibility with regards to how we receive educational documentation from applicants. Um, so we are, it kind of modernizes, I guess, our regulations, um, which, uh, you know, when these were created, everything was in hard copy. But we are actively working with DCA. Um, presently, all of the supporting materials are under review by the Department of Consumer Affairs, so we are awaiting their feedback on this package. And the last one, attachment eight. Attachment eight, um, continuing testing for the uniform CPA examination. This is really a cleanup package um, that we initiated when NASBA um, made the decision to transition from a Windows-based um, exam delivery system to a continuous testing. Um, we looked at our regulations and um, we determined that we needed to do some changes to make it clearer. Um, so we uh, took a package to the board. The board approved proposed uh, regulatory language but we had really broad authority in the statutes um, that provided the flexibility we needed to transition to that continuous testing format um, uh, without having the, reg the regs changed. So um, we are uh, using the continuing testing format and this will be a cleanup package. Um, probably we'll combine it with um, another package that's in the development page, uh, development stage, excuse me, and um, provide additional information on the status towards the end of the year. So that is a very quick <laughs> um, overview of the different attachments. I apologize if I was um, going kind of quick there, um, but I am happy to answer any questions that members may have regarding any of the information. Thank you, Ms. Pierce. It looks like I have a hand for Ms. Molina. 
Yes, thank you, President Corrigan. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Pierce and staff. This is a lot of work. Uh, I do appreciate seeing the summaries of the rulemaking um, actions that we have ongoing right now. This is a very nice presentation. Um, my question has to do with the public hearing process. I'm curious to know how is the public and uh, other stakeholders like the licensees population, how are they notified about the public hearings? Um, I also uh, heard you mention that uh, participation was low and I was curious whether you have noticed if it is low perhaps because of the global pandemic um, or has there been better participation in the past? Uh, I would just like some insight there. Thank you. Ms. Pierce? Thank you. So um, first, let me talk about what there, what the rules are for for the public hearing. Um, this is really um, detailed out and prescribed in law regards to um, what we have to do. So once we get all the approvals in place, we have to file a notice um, with the Office of Administrative Law um, that identifies um, when the hearing will be held. It gives an overview of the proposal. Um, it includes the proposed text of the regulation, um, and that information is included in the um, regulatory notice register, which is a publication that is provided by the Office of Administrative Law. So that's what OAL has to do on their end. On the CBA's end, we also um, have a requirement to post those materials on our website. Um, it has to be done um, in a specific time frame prior to the public hearing. So on our website under uh, uh, laws and regs and then under pending regulations, we have all of those um, pending files posted. It includes the notice, um, uh, if where to provide comments, um, where to come if you want to provide um, testimony in person. Um, so all, those, all that information is on our website. With regards to how we get the word out, um, we have a few different things that we do. Um, one is we have an actual mailing list, um, the old hard copy mailing list that we uh, update and send out to anybody who would like to have a hard copy of the proposal or to get information regarding our proposed regulatory changes. The other thing that we do is on our website, we have an e-news system. And within that, um, individuals can select different areas that they want to receive um, email notifications on. And one of those areas is regards, uh, in regards to proposed regulations. So once we have the notice posted on our website, um, we will do an, an e-news blast um, to all those individuals as well. Um, oftentimes, depending on the subject matter, there may be something in our update publication. Um, Cal CPA um, has been awesome about, you know, at times getting the word out as well. Um, so we have a few different ways that we, we get the information out. Um, going back to your question regarding um, low participation, um, we have, you know, there have been hearings where we have had, um, you know, people comment, and I think it's probably subject based. But one of the things that we have done, I think, is, you know, our transparency. We aren't just, um, you know, uh, proposing something and moving forward and not getting comments and, and not sharing the information with stakeholders. So um, although we've had kind of, you know, maybe not a large amount of people come to a public hearing. I think it's probably maybe more reflective that we've been transparent through the deliberation process um, and answered questions um, before we get to the part where we actually have a public hearing. So I think that's it's more of a positive than necessarily a negative. But I hope that was responsive and I'm happy to answer any additional questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Pierce. Yes, I, I absolutely do agree that uh, the CBA staff uh, um, is, is fabulous and I feel the same, you know, when um, during our meetings here, we tend to have few questions and it's because CBA staff has already provided sufficient uh, 
good, well-informed, uh, well-organized information. And so uh, I do agree with that sentiment that perhaps the public is, uh, you know, feeling the same. So thank you. Thank you. I echo that comment, Ms. Molina. Members, any other questions or comments on this agenda item? I see no further hands raised. Moderator, would you please check for public comment? This is the moderator. Members of the public, the instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click on the Q&A button and type, I would like to make a comment in the ask field and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do. Thank you. For agenda item 2H, uh, Carrie Holmes will be available uh, to us shortly. So I'm going to hold that item and I'm going to move on to agenda item 3, report of the Vice President, Michael Savoy, CPA. Mr. Savoy. Thank you, Madam President. This item is to recommend the reappointment of Mike Johnson, CPA, and Jim Sanji, CPA, to the Enforcement Advisory Committee. The Enforcement Advisory Committee assists the CBA in an advisory capacity with enforcement activities. This includes reviewing closed investigation files, providing technical guidance on open investigations, and participating in investigative hearings. I have conferred with the CBA executive officer to verify that each individual has met the appropriate requirements for license renewal and have demonstrated the skills and knowledge to serve as a member on the Enforcement Advisory Committee. I would like to make a motion to reappoint Mike Johnson, CPA, and Jim Sanji, CPA, to the Enforcement Advisory Committee, effective until September 30th, 2023. And now we'll turn it back over to President Corrigan to ask for a second. Thank you, Mr. Savoy. Members, um, uh, Ms. Hines, I believe I saw your hand first. Do I have a second? Yes, I second the motion. Thank you. And do I have any further discussion from the members on this agenda item? I see no hands. Moderator, would you please check for any public comment? Members of the public, the instructions are on the screen. If you would like to participate, click the Q&A button, type, I would like to make a comment, and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do. Thank you. And Ms. Reed, would you please call for the vote and provide the result? Carrie Ann Farrell Hines? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Soshi Leon? Yes. Luz Molina Lopez? Yes. Dee Dee Owens? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Mark Silverman? Yes. Yen Tu? Yes. And Nancy Corrigan? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Savoy, please proceed with agenda item 3B. This item is to recommend the reappointment of Brad Halsworth, CPA, and Michael L. Williams, CPA, to the Qualifications Committee. The Qualifications Committee assists the CPA in its licensure activity by reviewing the experience of applicants for licensure and making recommendations to the CPA. This includes conducting work paper reviews with the applicant or the employer present to verify that the responses provided are reflective of the requisite experience for licensure. I have conferred with the CBA executive officer to verify that each individual has met the appropriate requirements for license renewal and has demonstrated the skills and knowledge to serve as a member on the qualifications committee. I would like to make a motion to reappoint Brad Osworth and Michael Williams to the Qualifications Committee, effective until September 30th, 2023. I'd like to turn it back over to President Carr again to get a second. 
Thank you. Members, may I have a second to that motion? Ms. Owens? Yes, I second. Thank you. Is there any further discussion from the members on this agenda item? I see no hands. Moderator, would you please check for any public comment? Is the moderator. Members of the public, the instructions are on the screen. If you would like to participate, click the Q&A button, type, I would like to make a public comment, and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do. Thank you. And Ms. Reed, would you call for the vote and please provide the results? Carrie Ann Farrell Hines? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Soshi Leon? Yes. Ms. Molina Lopez? Yes. Dee Dee Owens? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Mark Silverman? Yes. Yen Tu? Yes. And Nancy Corrigan? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Savoy, please proceed with agenda item 3C. Thank you. This item is to recommend the appointment of Jeff Delizer, CPA, as both a member and the chairperson, Nick Peterson, and Fausto Hinosa, CPA, to the Peer Review Oversight Committee. The Peer Review Oversight Committee assessed the CPA in an advisory capacity in its oversight of the peer review program. As with all appointments and reappointments, I have verified that the individual have met the requirements for a license renewal and have demonstrated the skills and knowledge to serve as a member on the Peer Review Oversight Committee. Consistent with the CBA guidelines and procedures manual, the CBA president can make interim appointments to a CBA advisory committee, subject to ratification at the next CBA meeting. In exercising this authority, CBA President Nancy Corrigan, uh, CPA appointed Jeff Delizer as a member and chairperson to the PROC due to a quorum issue and the resignation of the former PROC chairperson. I would like to make a motion to appoint Jeff Delizer to the Peer Review Oversight Committee effective until September 30th, 2023, and chairperson effective until December 31st, 2021, and appoint Nick Peterson and Fasto Hinosa to serve on the Peer Review Oversight Committee effective until September 30th, 2023. I'd like to turn this back over to President Corrigan to get a second on my motion. Thank you. Members, may I have a second to that motion? Mr. Silverman. I'm sorry, Mr. Silverman, I couldn't hear you. I second Mr. Savoy's motion. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this agenda item from the members? Seeing no hands, moderator, would you please check with the public for any comments? This is the moderator. If you would like to make a public comment, please click uh, in the question and answer box and type, I would like to make a public comment and unmute yourself when prompted. Seeing no comments, would you like me to close the option? Yes, please do. Thank you. Ms. Reed, please call for the vote and please provide the result. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Soshi Leon? Yes. Luz Molina Lopez? Yes. Dee Dee Owens? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Mark Silverman? Yes. Yen Tu? Yes. And Nancy Corrigan? Yes. The motion carries. 
Thank you. I'm moving on to agenda item four, report of the Secretary Treasurer, Mark Silverman Esquire, our Secretary Treasurer. Mr. Silverman, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, provided for your review uh, is the Secretary Treasurer report containing the 2020-2021 fiscal month 12 financial statement. The CBA budget authority for prior fiscal year 2020-2021 was 16,323,000. The budget authority for the current fiscal year is currently set at $17,614,000, reflecting an end to the 9.23% employee compensation reduction. As displayed on page two, actual expenditures as of fiscal month 12 were $14,805,917, and the CBA had an approximate surplus of 9%. On pages three and four are highlights of key expenditure items, including a display of the enforcement expenditures for the past seven years. Our total revenues for fiscal year 2020-2021 amounted to $17,879,137, which is an increase of approximately 42% over fiscal year 2019-2020. This reflects the first full year of the license renewal and initial licensing fee increase that went into effect on January 1st of 2020. The fee increase regulation public hearing was held on August 18th, 2021 at the CBA office. Additional information will be presented under agenda item 11A. If you turn to the fund condition statement on page six, the expenditures are located on the bottom portion of the page and reflect that the CBA will end fiscal year 2020-2021 with eight months in the reserve fund. The impact of the general fund loan is reflected in the months in reserve at the end of fiscal year 2020-21 and beyond. That loan is scheduled to be repaid in fiscal year 2024 to 2025. This concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer or have staff available to answer any questions members may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Silverman. Members, do we have any questions regarding this agenda item or comments? I see no raised hands. Moderator, would you please check for any public comments? Is the moderator. I'm opening up the Q&A. Members of the public, if you would like to participate, the instructions are on the screen. To, um, click on the Q&A icon and type, I would like to make a comment in the ask field and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do. Thank you. I am now moving on to agenda item 14, which is the approval of the minutes. If any member would like to make a motion to adopt the minutes of the May 13, 14, 2021 California Board of Accountancy meeting, which includes additional information added uh, to page uh, 2438, and it includes non-substantive edits, uh, please do so by raising your hand, preacher, and wait to be called upon. Ms. Molina? Thank you. I make a motion to accept the minutes. Thank you. And do I have a second, Mr. Jacobson? I second that motion. Thank you. Is there any further discussion regarding these minutes from members? Seeing none, moderator, would you open for public comment? is the moderator members of the public i will have the instructions on the screen in just a moment if you would like to participate click on the q a icon located at the bottom right corner of your webex screen and type i would like to make a public comment and send it to all panelists no requests have been submitted would you like me to close the q a feature Yes, please. Thank you. And Ms. Reed, would you please call for the vote, provide the result? Carrie Ann Farrell-Hines? Yes. 
Dan Jacobson? Yes. Soshi Leon? Yes. Luz Molina Lopez? Yes. Dee Dee Owens? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Mark Silverman? Yes. Yen Tu? Yes. And Nancy Corrigan? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Agenda item 14B is adoption of the minutes of the July 22nd, 23rd, 2021 California Board of Accountancy uh, meeting, which includes non substantive edits that were noted after the materials were received. Members, may I have a motion to adopt? Ms. Molina? Thank you. I make a motion to accept the minutes. Thank you. Members, may I have a second? Ms. Owens? Uh, yes, I second. Thank you. Is there any further discussion from members on this agenda item? I see no hands. Moderator, would you please check for any public comment? The moderator, members of the public, the instructions are on the screen. If you would like to participate, click on the Q&A button, type I would like to make a public comment and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do, and thank you. Ms. Reed, would you call for the vote? Please provide the result. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Soshi Leon? Yes. Luz Molina Lopez? Yes. Dee Dee Owens? Yes. Ariel Pay? I'm sorry, excuse me. Katrina Salazar? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Mark Silverman? Yes. Yen Tu? Yes. And Nancy Corrigan? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 14 C and D, which is acceptance of the minutes of the July 23rd, 2021 Committee on Professional Conduct conduct meeting and also the enforcement program oversight committee meeting. Uh, these items uh, include any non-substantive edits that were noted after the materials were received. Do I have a motion? It looks like I have a hand from Ms. Molina. Yes, I would like to make a motion to adopt the minutes. You members may I have a second. I can check the it. Ms. Owens, I see your hand. Thank you for that second. Members, is there any further discussion on this on these two agenda items? Acceptance of these minutes. I see no hands. Moderator, would you please check for any public comment? Instructions on the screen. If you would like to participate, please click on the QA button, type, I would like to make a comment and send it to all panelists. The instructions are currently on your screen. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please. Thank you. And Ms. Reed, would you please call for the vote, provide the result? Carrie Ann Farrell Hines? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Soshi Leon? Yes. Luz Molina Lopez? Yes. Dee Dee Owens? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Mark Silverman? Yes. Yen Tu? Yes. And Nancy Corrigan? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. I'm now moving on to agenda item 15, other business. 15A, American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. There is no report. 
15B, National Association of State Boards of Accountancy, one report of NASBA's Pacific Regional Director, Katrina Salazar, CPA. Ms. Salazar? Thank you so much, uh, President Corrigan. Um, so NASBA, uh, hopefully everyone is continuing to receive communications with your, um, your CBA board email address about NASBA updates. Uh, I'd like to just catch you up to speed really quickly and um, thank those of you who, who were able to attend the June regional meeting. Um, it, I wasn't at the July meeting to give a, an in-person update, but the combined virtual format um, was well received. It broke all attendance records and uh, we were very pleased with the participation um, across the states and uh, jurisdictions at that event. Um, so thank you everyone who was able to join in. Um, I do want to remind folks that yesterday, the invitation for the 114th NASBA annual meeting was emailed out to all of the board members. So you should have received that. That event is going to be virtual um, due to COVID uh, travel restrictions and safety concerns. So again, uh, keeping the health and welfare of all of the uh, members and attendees is, is top of mind. So that is the region. The reason that the on-ground event is being canceled, you may recall it was originally scheduled here in the state of California. Um, and so we're hoping maybe next year uh, to resume in-person uh, uh, events, um, but look for that email to register. The dates are November 2nd and November 3rd. And again, that is virtual. So you're welcome to register and join in for those sessions that you are able to participate in. So even if you can't do the whole thing, um, I would encourage you to attend. Um, as the regional director, I would like to uh, report that there was uh, a recently a regional call and I would like to thank um, our representatives from this board and participating in the Pacific region call. The topics of conversation were, were primarily within our group and across uh, the US and the other regions were really primarily renewals and CPE audits. How is COVID impacting those, how are changes in how licensees are working remotely and moving around, changing how we're handling those. Um, and then this recent quarter, we tried something different. You may have noticed there were not focus questions presented to the Board of Accountancy um, for input. And instead, those were actually wrapped into the fall regional call. And so um, our group discussed on that call uh, updates on what was happening with evolution, COVID impacts uh, with our board and our neighboring boards, as well as um, just listening to how boards were dealing uh, with diversity challenges um, within the region and across the U.S. Um, so with that, uh, I would just encourage you to uh, keep your um, email receiving those NASBA updates because as you know, evolution and uh, the, the changes that are coming in the exam um, continue to move along, uh, just like our board is busy with eight rulemaking packages. Um, there are lots of changes in, um, in our profession that, uh, that welcome your input as well and your continued attention. So um, I do want to let you know that when I step down uh, at the end of the annual meeting as your regional director, want to remind you that your own Nancy Corrigan will be the new Pacific Region Director. So I just want to say thank you, Nancy, publicly for stepping forward to take that up. And I'm very proud to have California continue to be represented. And I know our region is going to be in great hands. So thank you. Happy to take any questions if there are any. Thank you, Ms. Salzor. Of course, that will be official once the board votes on that, but every indication is that they will. So. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Molina, looks like I see a raised hand. Yes, thank you, President Corrigan. And, and uh, I echo the same uh, gratitude. Thank you for stepping up. And Ms. Salazar, thank you for representing us at NASBA. Uh, I do appreciate all of the work that you do there. Um, I wanted to just make a comment. I, I, earlier uh, in your presentation, you mentioned that the attendance at the annual meeting, uh, I think you said was record breaking. And um, I, it, I venture to guess it's probably because it was virtual. And uh, so that is one of the things I feel about the global pandemic that uh, has 
been um, a, a bus facilitated part of my daughter. Anyway, I was going to mention, I appreciate the, the virtual meetings. Um, now that we are, you know, considering going back to uh, the standard ways of doing business and doing in-person meetings, I would like to uh, consider uh, hybrid meetings. And so further on uh, in our agenda, I think I will be making that recommendation for staff for our personal meetings at the CBA. Uh, look into having them be virtual. Sorry about that. Thank you. Anything further, uh, members, for Ms. Salazar and, and her report? And we should open for any possible public comments or questions. Moderator, please. For the moderator, members of the public, the instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you're interested, click on the Q&A icon, type, I would like to make a public comment in the Ask field and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please. Thank you. And Ms. Salazar, was there anything further from your corner regarding NASBA? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. And as far as our continuing professional education committee, that is 15B2A. Uh, that committee has not met so I have no report met since last time. I have no report. Our relations with board members committee, we have no report. And see our strategic planning task force uh, with Ms. Bowers, there is no report at this time. So I had hoped to go back to agenda item 2H with our Department of Consumer Affairs um, representative. However, I need to check to see whether she or someone is available for us. So at this time, we don't have anyone available. Would they be available for us tomorrow or? Okay, we will check to see if they can give their report to us tomorrow. Um, I will say along those lines that I attended the Brown Bag meeting on September 1st. It discussed uh, per diem, travel pay and related best practices and how policies vary amongst the various boards within California. Um, we all know that the CBA has a good working system that is well monitored for that process. DCA shared worksheets and guideline materials that were very helpful that other boards may be able to use. Um, and members, if you ever have any questions regarding these items, you may contact Ms. Bowers directly. I just want to continue to say that the DCA's brown bag sessions and their quarterly leadership meetings are very well presented and very informative. Members, do you have any questions regarding my little summary there? I put that out there for you, please. I don't see any hands. Uh, public uh, moderator, would you check to see whether we have any comments? Is the moderator of the public, if you would like to participate, the instructions are on the screen. Click that Q and A button. Type I would like to make a public comment and send it to all panelists. No requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please do. At this time, we will need to recess for lunch, reminding you that at 1.30, we have a time certain petition hearing. Um, you may turn off your audio, your video. Please try to stay linked because we need to start at 1.30 sharp. We will have an administrative law judge a court recorder, we will have the petitioner, legal counsel, et cetera. So it's very important that we honor that 1.30 time certain. Thank you and have a nice lunch. Thank you everyone for your patience here. So before we begin, um, can I get the names of all the folks on the board so I can establish that we have a quorum. Let's see, the president, um, what that would be Ms. Corrigan. Ms. Corrigan, are you present? And I see your video. Can you hear me? 
might be muted. Are we having technical difficulties? I can hear you just fine. I just don't know if the office can hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, now we can hear you. Uh, excuse me. Uh, this is Nancy Corrigan. I'm ready to proceed with agenda item five, which is petition hearings. Okay. This is uh, Josie Narayan, CPA license number 134193, petition for termination of probation and reduction of penalty. And Sorry, I want to interrupt through. you, Ms. Corrigan. I apologize. I forgot to hit that record button. This meeting is being recorded. Thank you. This is President Nancy Corrigan. We are now on agenda item five petition hearing for Joe C. Narayan, CPA license number 134193, petition for termination of probation and reduction of penalty. Before we get started, I want to read some items to establish our petition hearing process for everyone present. And I wanna welcome the petitioner and also our administrative law judge, Jessica Wall. So before we start the petition hearing, Ms. Reed, the CBA's board relations analyst, will conduct a roll call to establish the CBA members present for the matter and to establish a quorum. After roll call, I will ask if any members need to recuse themselves from the matter. After the quorum has been established and any recusals occur, our administrative law judge will then take appearances and will swear in the petitioner. Your Honor will allow the Deputy Attorney General to provide an overview of the petition before us and seek to enter into evidence the petition packet and any additional materials. Your Honor will then provide the petitioner the opportunity to provide an opening statement and present and enter into evidence any additional documents. After which, Your Honor will allow for the Deputy Attorney General to examine the petitioner. The petitioner then shall be afforded the opportunity to provide a response. After the examination and response, I will request Your Honor to ask Ms. Reed to perform a roll call of each CBA member to allow members to ask any questions they may have of the petitioner. If a member does not have a question, simply state no questions. After Ms. Reed completes polling members for questions, I will ask if any member would like to ask a follow-up question. If so, members are asked to raise their hand and wait for me to call upon them. After the CBA member's examination of the petitioner, your honor shall provide the Deputy Attorney General and petitioner the opportunity to provide any closing statements or remarks. After the closing remarks are received, your honor shall close the record. Once the petition hearing has been concluded, the members will meet in closed session to deliberate on the petition hearing. One final reminder, when you are asking a question, responding to a question or making a comment, it is important to remember that a court reporter will be capturing a record of the petition hearing Please be cognizant to not speak over another person and be close to the microphone on your computer or your telephone so you can be heard clearly. If you are not speaking, please mute your microphone to prevent any unwanted microphone feedback. So at this time, I'm going to ask Ms. Reed to please call for the roll to identify the members present and to establish a quorum. Ms. Reed? Nancy Corrigan? Present. Michael Savoy. Present. Mark Silverman. Present. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines. Present. Dan Jacobson. Present. Sochi Leon. Here. Luz Molina Lopez. Present. Dee Dee Owens. Present. Deirdre Robinson? Present. Katrina Salazar? Present. Yin Tu? Present. And we have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Now, are there any members that need to recuse themselves from this matter? If so, 
please show a by raising your hand. And I do not see any raised hands. So I would like to now turn this over to our administrative law judge. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Corrigan. So before we begin, I try to get some pronunciations correct. So um, the petitioner, is it pronounced Jyothi Narayan? If you're able to unmute yourself and just. Jyothi Narayan. Narayan, okay. All right, and our Deputy Attorney General, Mr. Ted, is it Durakar? How do you That's say it? Right. That's Durakar? how I say it, yes. All right, okay. Is there anything else before we go on the record today? See no, I nothing? believe we're ready to go, thank you. Okay, wonderful. So we are on the record in the matter of the petition for termination of probation and reduction of penalty. This matter is being heard before the California Board of Accountancy. A quorum of the board is present. My name is Jessica Wall. I'm an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings, and I've been assigned to preside over this matter. This matter is a petition for termination of probation and reduction of penalty filed by Jyothi Narayan, agency case number SI-2017-69. OAH case number 20210801115. May I please take the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General? Yes, good afternoon. My name is Ted Durkar. That's spelled D R C A R, and I am a Deputy Attorney General. Thank you, Mr. Durkar. We have Ms. Narayan present and representing herself. Ms. Narayan, are you aware that you could have hired an attorney to represent you in this matter? Yes, I am. Thank you. Do you wish to proceed representing yourself? Yes, thank, thank you. you. Okay, so Ms. Narayan, before we proceed, I'm going to just swear you in so that anything you say can be considered as evidence. If you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will provide in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, Ms. Narayan. So as you are unrepresented, I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown of how things will work today. In this proceeding, the board is concerned with hearing about any rehabilitation since your license was disciplined. Mr. Durkar will first present your petition package and provide a background of this matter. After that, you'll have an opportunity to make your presentation. Just a reminder that the board has had the opportunity to read your petition package and you do not have to repeat anything within that package. You will be subject to questioning both by the board and by Mr. Durkar. After the hearing, the board will go into closed session to deliberate. You will not receive a decision today and it will be mailed in the near future. Do you have any questions, Ms. Narayan? I do not, thank you. Thank you. If anything comes up, please let me know. I cannot give you legal advice, but I can give you guidance on the hearing procedures. So with that, we will go first to Mr. Durkar to present the petition package and a history of the matter. Now I'm unmuted. Uh, thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to explain my role here. Uh, I am appearing on behalf of the people of the state of California uh, by authority of Business and Professions Code Section 5115 and Government Code Section 11522 uh, for this hearing on the petition for termination of probation by Ms. Narayan. Uh, my role in this hearing is to assist the board members and the judge in fact finding. My role is not adversarial as an opposing attorney, uh, but rather uh, my role is intended to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. I am here to uh, ensure that the board and your honor uh, have the information that you need to make uh, an informed and reasoned decision in this case. Uh, so with that said, uh, I'd like to turn to the packet of documents of evidence that everybody should have, including each board member, your honor, and the petitioner. 
um, I'd like to start by marking that as exhibit one. And uh, uh, it should consist, everybody's packet should consist of a total of exactly 100 pages, which are marked as JN PET 001 through 100. Um, so, uh, first, uh, next, I would like to uh, offer that into evidence. Thank you, Mr. Durkar. Ms. Narayan, do you have any objection to Exhibit 1 being admitted into evidence? I do not. How, um, however, I do have one additional piece of paper um, that I would like to, that I had um, uh, inadvertently excluded from my package, and it was um, it was one of the certificates. So within the cover letter, there was an indication that I had submitted. Um, I had uh, claimed 170 hours, and I had only submitted 165.5 in certificates. It so happened that there was eight hours worth of CPE certificate that I was that was attached they were stuck two pieces of paper stuck together when i copied everything to send send in and i didn't notice that this one failed to make it to the package so i will be happy to send this over to the cba however in whatever format it's required okay so that's you, Mr. Ryan. so i'm uh, including this eight hours of cp certificate that um, the support supporting certificates for the total number of hours claimed that I had submitted will be complete. Okay, so at this time, we don't all have that before us. So if you were able to, uh, if we take a brief break at some point, if you could get that both to the CBA and Mr. Durkar. Yep, I can email can, it to you. We can propose submitting that as exhibit two. Does that sound acceptable, Mr. Durkar? Yes, that would be fine. No objection. Okay, thank you. Okay, so hearing no objection to exhibit one, with the exception that it is incomplete and exhibit two will supplement it, exhibit one is admitted for all purposes. All right, Your Honor. Uh, I'd like to point out a couple of the contents of Exhibit 1. Uh, there is the notice of hearing at pages 98 and 99. Uh, Ms. Narayan's petition is at pages 5 through 11. And most of the packet that you have in front of you, including pages 13 through 80, is documentation of professional education uh, courses. And, Your Honor, if it's all right, I'd like to present a summary of the case this time? Yes, Mr. Durkar. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Ms. Narayan received her CPA certificate number 134193 in August 2017. The license history is at pages 96 to 97 of your packet. Uh, her license application resulted in a statement of issues that led to a stipulated settlement, which this board approved and adopted effective uh, September 1st, 2017. Uh, the statement of issues is at pages 82 to 87 of your packet if you wish to review it. The board's decision and order is at page 88, and the stipulated settlement and disciplinary order are at pages 89 through 95. Uh, the disciplinary order uh, provided that Ms. Narayan's license was issued and revoked with the revocation stay during three years of probation. Ms. Narayan has complied with all terms of probation and her probation would have ended last year, but probation has been uh, tolling uh, because she relocated to Pennsylvania in July 2019 and thus has not been practicing uh, within the state of California. Ms. Narayan's uh, discipline, uh, the probation, arises from a 2012 disciplinary order by the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, uh, the PCAOB. The facts and circumstances of uh, behind that discipline are summarized 
in Mr. Franzella's memo at pages two and three of your packet. And they're also uh, described in the statement of issues pleading at pages 85 and 86 of your packet. I'll give a summary of the highlights of uh, the misconduct behind that discipline. Ms. Narayan was a director of the firm McGladry and Pullen in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. That firm is now RSM US LLP. Uh, the firm had audited a particular company's financial statements and issued unqualified opinions for the years 2007 through 2009. Ms. Narayan was an engagement manager for those audits. Uh, the PCAOB inspected these audits and found misconduct with respect to McGladry's audit of the 2009 financial statement. After the engagement's uh, finalization date, and it, apparently in anticipation of a PCAOB inspection, one of the work papers was covertly altered and other papers were added to the file. The PCAOB found that Ms. Narayan and other respondents did not dis disclose these ch this change and the late additions to the PCAOB and thus violated PCAOB rule 4006, which is the duty to cooperate with inspectors. Ms. Narayan stipulated uh, to a disciplinary order, which consisted of a censure and a one-year suspension from being associated with a public accounting firm registered with the PCAOB. Uh, page 11 of Ms. Narayan's petition has a narrative with a rationale for why her probation should be terminated at this time. Her current circumstances are that she relocated to Pennsylvania for personal and family reasons. She says she is not practicing public accounting and is enrolled full-time at the University of New Hampshire master's program for community development. Uh, she is doing some per diem bookkeeping and financial analysis for nonprofit clients. Uh, and this is her argument for ending probation. She says, given that I have relocated permanently to Philadelphia and I'm no longer in the practice of public accounting, I am respectfully requesting that my probation be terminated and that I no longer be subject to the re compliance requirements of the disciplinary order. Ms. Narayan also says that a requirement to comply with probation indefinitely because of tolling would be a hardship to her. Uh, that concludes my summary of, of the case. And uh, Ms. Narayan does have the burden of proof in this matter. And I'm prepared to ask her questions once her uh, opening presentation is done. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Durkar. All right, Ms. Narayan, we now switch over to you. You will have an opportunity to present your case, so testify on your own behalf. I remind you, you're already sworn in under oath, so anything you say can be considered as evidence. You're reminded again that the board has the benefit of your petition package, so you don't need to repeat contents within it. So the floor is yours, Ms. Narayan. Thank you. Um, I don't have a whole lot to add. Um, in 2016, I had when I had moved to California, um, I had put in an application for a CPA license in the state of California. And one of the requirements of the application was to disclose any any matters, any disciplinary matters that were within five years of that application. So because the PCOB matter um, became effective in 2012 and self expired on in uh, 2013, and that was within the, the five year gap of the the 2016 application, I made disclosure of of that uh, of that item. Um, the PCOB matter ended um, in 2013. That was that was the last of it. And um, like I said, um, I was I have uh, I agreed to the CBA's probationary order, and. Um, I have complied with all of the requirements and the compliance requirements of the uh, the CBA's order 
one of the requirements also has been to maintain an active CPA license. And I have continued to do that, including taking all of the required CPE credits to meet the requirements of maintaining an active license in the state of California. Um, admittedly, I've, I'm no longer in the practice of public accounting and I don't have a plan right now, again, for personal and family reasons to be moving back to California or practicing in California. So I'm re re respectfully requesting that the, the probation be terminated. I, I have been continuing since I moved to Philadelphia in July of 2019 to submit the quarterly probationary report to the CBA. And I have done that very diligently and like clockwork. So as I've indicated in my, in my request, um, if this, this probation continues because of tolling, I will have to submit quarterly reports for as long as it takes. Um, assuming that I stay permanently in, in Philadelphia and don't move back to California and don't practice in, in California. So I'm, I'm echoing what I've requested in my, in my petition. Thank you, Ms. Narayan. So now, if you don't have anything further to add at this point, I open it up to Mr. Durkar for questions. Do you have anything else you'd like to say before that? No, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Durkar, it's your turn. Good afternoon, Ms. Narayan. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Good afternoon. Uh, I have some questions for you about matters that I think could be helpful to the board and the judge in deciding your petition. Uh, it looks like you have a history as a CPA uh, before you became licensed in California. When were you first licensed as a CPA? Um, I was licensed in Pennsylvania in 1989. And uh, are you still licensed there? I have an active license in Pennsylvania, yes. Is it in good standing? Yes, it is. Uh, before this matter with the PCAOB, had you ever been disciplined for any other reason? No, I have not. And are you licensed as a CPA in any other jurisdictions? I am licensed in New Jersey. Uh, still today? Yes, that's an active license. And uh, when were you first licensed there? Um, I would have to go back and check my record. Um, but it was it was definitely after 1989. Um, for the simple reason that while I was working at McLaudry and Pullen in Pennsylvania, we had clients that were on both sides of the river, both in New Jersey and in Pennsylvania. And um, it, it was just a matter of expedience to be licensed in the state of New Jersey while I was also licensed in Pennsylvania. Um, I apologize, I can't remember the exact year for when uh, my, my New Jersey license became effective, um, but that is something I can get back to you on after I check my record. I don't want to misstate the year. Um, that That's fine, and we don't really need to know the exact year, but it sounds like it would have been in the 90s sometime. Um, that sounds about right. Okay. I think that'll do for our purposes. I just wanted to get a sense of uh, where else you've been licensed and for about how long. That's good. Uh, let's talk now about the PCAOB uh, discipline. Uh, we have some detail about it, uh, but not too much. And I'd like to hear from you about it. Um, could you tell the board members and the judge um, what you uh, admit that you did wrong uh, that led to the discipline? So in the, I'll, I'll summarize it. Um, the real rule requires is, is not that um, items cannot be added to the work papers. 
It's just that when an item is added to the work papers, it has to be signed and dated contemporaneously. And that's what I failed to do. It was an inadvertent um, not knowing um, that this, the signature and the date had to be contemporaneously added to the work papers as well. So um, the, what happened in the background, though, is that I became um, at the at the conclusion of the um, um, of the the ins the PCOB inspection. I became aware through talking to individuals within the firm that I may have inadvertently violated a PCOB rule. So I self-reported that to the firm's counsel and the firm's counsel immediately reported that to the PCOB. So the, so the, uh, I would contend that the PCOB disciplinary action didn't come about because they uncovered something and that I was trying to cover something up. It was already self-reported to them. What lessons did you learn as a result of the experience of being disciplined by the PCAOB? To take utmost care in reading regulations and in in and particularly in complying with regulations um their regulations are very vast and diverse so i have been very particularly careful about paying attention to what i need to do it to comply with regulations do you plan to keep your cpa certificate active uh, moving forward um, my, my plan, re and not just with, with uh, the California license, but also with the Pennsylvania and the New Jersey licenses, is um, to place them in an active status with the, with the permission of the appropriate boards of accountancy. Um, for the simple reason that I work really hard to get my licenses. And Carrying a license is a privilege, but to the extent that um, I've, I won't be necessarily in the practice of public accounting doesn't require me to have an active license. However, having a, a CPA uh, license or being licensed is still valuable in industry. Right at this moment, I'm not working in industry. I'm working as an independent contractor, as an independent consultant. If I do decide to move into industry and work in the capacity or a capacity where an active CPA license is warranted and valuable, then I would like to reactivate with the appropriate, after meeting the appropriate board of accountancies requirements for those and the cpa requirements are very different for new jersey for pennsylvania and for california i have a few questions for you about the per diem bookkeeping uh, that you've been doing lately are you doing bookkeeping for organizations that don't need someone uh full-time they're really yes uh they're really small organizations for, in, for example, uh, a church in Philadelphia that doesn't require a full-time um, accountant or in-house bookkeeper. I just um, I do their bank reconciliations. I uh, record their checks based upon their approval, whatever disbursements they want to have made. And to the extent that the vestry requires uh, monthly reports, I produce them from QuickBooks. So I do similar work for a couple of other similar, not, uh, not they're not religious institutions, but other small not-for-profit organizations that don't have their own, that are not large enough to have their own accounting department. Do you run trial balances for some of your clients? Based upon, um, I don't run trial balances. I just, well, based upon the transactions that 
that the author management authorizes. I record them in QuickBooks and I produce uh, their monthly reports, have balance sheet and income statement. Do you provide any advice to management of these organizations? No, I don't. All right. Uh, those are all the questions that I have, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Durkar. We now move over to the board. So, Ms. Corrigan, would you like to go through each member to see if they have questions, or would you like me to do that? Uh, yes, uh, typically what we do, Your Honor, is, is ha have the Ms. Reed go through kind of a roll call and give each one an opportunity. So, Ms. Reed, if you could do that, that'd be great. Carry on, Farrell Hines. No questions. Dan Jacobson. I have no questions. Sershi Leon. I have no questions. Luz Molina Lopez. Yes, thank you, Ms. Reed. I do have a question for Ms. Norayan. Ms. Norayan, can you please um, let me know where did you live before you moved to California? Was it the state of Pennsylvania? I was living in Pennsylvania, yes. Yeah. And would you be able to give me a little bit of background as to your decision to move to California? Uh, I believe it was in 2017. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was a it was a personal decision. Um, I got divorced after 31 years of marriage, and um, it was it, it was quite a, um, a traumatic time for me. And um, I just I just wanted to get a fresh start. I had some relatives who were living in California and I moved to California, to, like I said, to, to get a fresh start. Thank you. And, and, and from 2017 up until, was it 2019 that you moved out of the state, out of California? Yes, I moved back uh, in July of 2019. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for answering my questions. You're welcome. Dee Dee Owen? I have no questions. Georgia Robinson? I have no questions. Katrina Salazar? No questions. Michael Savoy? No questions. Mark Silverman? No questions. Yen Tu? No questions. And Nancy Corrigan? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, members, before we turn it back over to your honor, is there anything further anyone has to say or wants to ask? Show by uh, raising your hand, seeing no hands. Uh, your honor, we'll turn it back over to you. Thank you very much. So at this time, Ms. Narayan, if there's anything that you would like to add based on the questions you've been asked before we close up your testimony, feel free to add it now. I just um, would like to be able to um, email this over, the, the certificate for, that was admitted to evidence as exhibit number two. If you could please provide me an email address, I can, I can send it over right away. Okay, I will turn to Ms. Reed. Would you be the person that would provide us with that email address? Sure, it's Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A dot read, R-E-E-D at C-B-A dot C-A dot G-O-V. May I excuse myself for 30 seconds so I can grab a pen and write that down? Yes, please. I apologize. Thank you. Could you please repeat that? Rebecca R E B E C C A 
dot read r e e d at c b a dot c a dot g o v. Okay, Ms. Narayan, did you get that? Yes, uh, I just wanted to make sure that the um, that read is not cap spelled with a capital R in the email. It doesn't matter if you capitalize it or not. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Ms. Narayan, we're going to have you submit that via email to Ms. Reed. Ms. Reed, are you able to get that to all members of the board and Mr. Durkar? Yes, I am once it's received. Okay. Okay. So, Ms. Narayan, when do you think you'll be able to send that to Ms. Reed? As soon as um, as soon as this hearing is done, I will scan it and I will email it. So within 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. So we are almost at that point. So let's say by 4 p.m. Pacific. Does that sound? Yes. Like a, okay. Yes. Okay, so we will be anticipating that by 4 p.m. Pacific and we can hold off on submission until that time. Um, Mr. Durkar, do you have any objection to that? No objection. Okay, great. Okay, so at this point, we have finished the testimony, so we move on to closing remarks. Ms. Narayan, as you have the burden in this matter, if you want to give any final closing argument as to why you believe that your probation should be modified. Like I said, um, complying with regulations is a very important matter to me based upon my experiences. So I fully respect the need to comply with the CBA's requirements. Um, just as a practical matter, um, if I'm going to be tolling out of California, and I would just have to keep submitting quarterly reports to the CBA. So um, it's uh, it's just a matter of practicality. So I'm re I'm requesting the CBA's indulgence in freeing me from that. Thank you, Ms. Ryan. Mr. Durkar, do you have any closing remarks or would you like to waive? Uh, yes, I have a few closing remarks. Uh, just want to remind uh, the board members and your honor that there are two important principles on any petition like this. First, that the protection of the public is the board's highest priority. And second, that the petitioner does have the burden of proof to demonstrate that she is re rehabilitated and should be released from probation. Uh, Ms. Narayan, uh, she says that she's not practicing accounting, but her bookkeeping work uh, may constitute the practice of public accountancy under Business and Professions Code Section 5051F. Uh, however, if Ms. Narayan is still working as a CPA, that does not weigh against her petition. It doesn't seem like it should. It would actually be good that she's continued to work, do some accounting uh, while she's on probation. Um, a mitigating uh, factor for uh, everyone's consideration here is that the misconduct behind the PCAOB order happened over 10 years ago, and the PCAOB order itself is uh, is nine years old. Um, looking over the evidence, uh, I don't see any basis to claim uh, that indefinite tolling of probation is necessary for public protection. So with that said, I believe that you all now have the relevant information to make an informed uh, decision on this petition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Durkar. Um, is there anything further from the board before we conclude this petition hearing? Hearing none? Okay. It looks like it, Your Honor. I think we're ready oh. to go ahead and close. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the petition hearing in this matter. The case will be submitted at 4 p.m. Pacific and the record will be closed at that point. We are off the record in this matter. So thank you very much, Ms. Narayan.
we will be moving on to board deliberations. But before we do that, I need to get some info from the court reporter, I believe, unless the board does that. Please proceed, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. So, Ms. Is it Melgren? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. So I have your name as M A R I E M E L L G R E N. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. And thank you for putting your CSR number in your information. Nine four four two. Is that correct? Yes, correct, Your Honor. What end time do you have for us today? I have 238. All right. And estimated number of pages. Uh, 50 pages, five zero, Your Honor. Five zero. All right. That is all I need from you, Ms. Melgren. Thank you very much for your assistance today. Thank you so much. Have a great okay. day. Thank you. Thank you. So um, at this time, we will clear the room and proceed into closed session. Is there anything the board needs to do to accomplish that? Yes, Your Honor, we have some staff that are uh, leaving. If you could just give us a moment. Okay. And Ms. Narayan, you're free to go as well. Thank you very much for your attendance today. Thank, thank you for hearing me. Have a good afternoon. You as well. The moderator. I have um, Ms. Karianne Farrell Hines. Your hand is up. Do you have a question? While we are uh, gathering and uh, removing folks from the meeting and going into closed session, can we take a couple of minutes break? Certainly, that will be fine. Let's make sure to be back at uh, 2.50. I'll give you a few extra minutes, okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I am removing the members of the public from the attendee list.